This is the worst Lego train. Like, what is that nose? But the worst part has gotta be that it runs completely off of batteries. So I'm gonna build this Lego train and see just how bad it actually is. Let's do this. Now, besides the fact that the nose looks so gross and it runs on batteries, the rest of the set actually doesn't look too bad. It looks like how an actual high-speed train would look like. This set came out last year in 2023, so I think it's one of the newest train sets. It might even be the newest train set. And nowadays, LEGO uses a power-up system, which runs off batteries and connects to the train via Bluetooth. The system LEGO used before this was battery-powered, and it was LEGO Power Functions, which used infrared instead of Bluetooth. So they all use different technology. It's really confusing. And then before the Power Functions era, there was 9-volt, which is my personal favorite because the trains get power directly from the wall and the rails power it. I actually made a video on this not too long ago and you can click up here for that. But yeah, I made a video on why this was so much better than battery powered trains, but now I actually got one of the newest Lego battery powered trains to see if that's true. So if I'm being honest, I think this set is a little too much. I think it's like 190 at retail or something. It's really expensive. And that's almost the same price I bought my nine volt for, which is like 24 years older and I like it better. But then again, this is like the newest train with all the newest technology. And I don't know if it's gonna be like sick or what so maybe i'll actually end up really liking this who knows yeah but over here on the side we got tape which is a first they usually use punch tabs so it's nice to see tape in a set for once but they should have had a middle tape that is really coming out <laughs> yeah let's just cut that and that one this box is like huge too i don't know why the box is so big maybe it's the track well let's look inside Ooh, tracks right on top huh got a whole stack of straight track we got that there i gotta zoom out for this dump this is gonna be a big dump okay here we go oh my this is a lot. Oh, uh, is that it? Oh, okay. I mean, that's probably like half the box. They gotta make it look like $200 somehow. Okay, it looks like the bags go up to bag seven. So we got quite a bit of building to do. So there's these bags that have the powered up system in it. And then another bag with another powered up thing in it with two boxes. Guess we'll have to see what's in those. And then track, this set's actually nice because it comes with eight straight track out of the box, which most Lego sets have never come with this much out of the box. So it's nice to see. And then instructions right here. It's actually a nice box for instructions. Okay, so I think this just like opens right here. I'm just gonna slice it open, it's easier. Then we got instructions galore apparently the first instruction is just track and then we got the engine which oh i don't like that nose <laughs> and then we got a car and another car so fairly simple there i still don't like lego's new renders they look so gross but if you do want good looking renders on the front of your instructions check out brickstudios.store it's link in description okay let's open up these bigger bags they got like a different texture too than the other bags which i think is weird they're like a softer sort of plastic that's way harder to open but as you can see in these ones we got these newer train pieces which are really cool you can change the width of the cars to however much you want which before these were just attached in the center so you couldn't do that so it's nice to see and then right here we got the controller this thing is small i've never had a powered up set so this is interesting what the yeah it's like look at my hand compared to this like my two thumbs are like bigger than that but there's all these technicals and studs on the bottom so technically i can make like more of a comfortable controller out of that and we got this bag right here okay i don't like these bags so why don't i just make them all the same plastic <laughs> Okay, so this one has the train magnets in it, which these pieces are nice to get because these are super expensive, <laughs> like all Lego train pieces. But yeah, these are the newer magnet pieces. Then I'm genuinely confused at what these are, but okay. This is the hub. So this is what like they plug into the motor and stuff. And one thing I forgot to mention, these things cost so much money just for these. So that's probably why the set costs so much. But the cool thing about this is since it uses Bluetooth, you can control it through your smartphone. So that's something modernized that you definitely couldn't do on older <laughs> Lego 9 volt sets. Oh, lights i forgot this set had lights so the front engine actually has working lights up front which we haven't seen in the set for a minute from what i can remember my nine volt set here actually does have working lights but i can't think of any other set in between that might have had lights they're almost identical to power functions lights which aren't the same thing as powered up they're the generation before but it's just slightly different these ends are exactly the same but this end down here is different so i'm interested because the only thing that this could be it would be the train motor but it's super thin so I don't know how they fit it in here. In order to get this out, I have to like bend the cardboard. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. So the motor is four wide and then the train wheels go on the sides. <laughs> so yeah, it's all this stuff. And then the worst part about these is that these both take batteries and a lot of them. Let's open bag one. Okay, so bag one literally has like a couple pieces in it. There is a brick separator though. And it makes that noise, so it's definitely a newer one. This is the noise of the old one. 
it's more like plasticky. I don't know, they must use something like more rubberish on the new one. This color of pants is actually cool, like the coral color. Uh, yeah, let's get building. Okay, I finished the station from bag one, but there's a missing piece and it's really interesting. So on this tree right here, in between those leaves is supposed to be this piece right here, but this one's from my collection. I couldn't find it anywhere. It is a piece that could roll off easily, so I'll keep you updated if I do find it, but I can't find it right now, so it's literally just not there. I don't know, interesting. Uh, but yeah, let's put all the track together. So if you noticed earlier, these tracks are in sections of four, and that's because they have these pegs that run through them and connect four together each. So it's really interesting, but they're super hard to get apart. Like there's one, and then I can see some indentations just from pulling it apart. So, I mean, it's kind of destroying the pieces destroying, but like <laughs> it's doing something to them. They don't tell you how to take these out in instructions. They don't even tell you to take them out. But they're just like these really weird pieces that I think are the same with his Lego bars, but they have no stud connections at all. They're really interesting. But yeah, those are on like every section of four tracks. So <sighs> a little hard to take apart. Ow, these things hurt. Oh man. Oh. <sighs> I'm like bending the plate. Like actually, <sighs> uh, nope. Oh. There we go. Yeah, I gotta show you this top one. Like, I'm not even joking. Yep, they're bent. Look, you can see the bend marks right there. That's how hard they were together. Lego really needed to fix that. Oh my, that's permanent. I definitely hate that about this set. All right, there's bag one completed. Let's move on to bag two. Okay guys, I was just getting ready for bag two and I realized that the piece that I was missing was underneath the brick separator. I think it's like this or something, but I picked it up and it just appeared. So it's not missing, which is good. And as this is usually the case, Lego like almost never misses pieces in sets. So if you think you're missing a piece, you probably have it somewhere. Okay, so bag two's got not too many pieces, actually not too many pieces. <laughs> oh man, I'm cringy. It's a lot of bigger pieces and I think we're starting on the front engine on this one. So this will be where all of the motors and things are. What the? Are these what modern wheels look like? So this is interesting. So these wheels go inside of here, right? So in this middle, it's hard to see when it's black, but in this middle is a completely studded off area and the bar doesn't go through there. But in the older ones, they use a metal bar that goes straight through the entire thing. So technically this is better because you have those anti-studs down there, but I don't know if this rolls as well as having a metal axle. Pretty basic pieces in general, but let's get building. One thing real quick, this is the older train wheel right here. And this is the newer one. The new one's like matte and it's got like a hollow inside sort of thing that's like, got, I don't know how to explain it. It's just slightly different, but yeah, that was interesting. But now we can actually get filled in. All right, this is the end of bag one. So as you can see, it's just the base of the train and a billion cables because the train motor is here and the lights are here, which the lights are actually interesting for one reason. So this is a Technic brick and the old power functions ones would go in there and stay like a friction pin. So you could just move it at whatever angle you want and it'd stay. But these ones are actually loose. So they just like sit, which I think I kind of like the power functions ones better because I don't see the point of them being loose like this. They have to be held in by these other pieces. So it's kind of like just useless is like you're gonna have to use more pieces to hold it in if it can't hold itself in. I think it's just kind of weird how they changed that. I don't see like any like particular reason why that would be good. <laughs> but yeah, let's open bag two. Oh yeah, there's also only one spare piece. I meant to say bag three. This one is definitely the top part of the train because it's lime green. Lime green is also an interesting choice for a train. I'm not sure if like that's an actual color of train. But, I mean, it's something different, so that's cool. But, yeah, a lot of bigger pieces in this one. There's the windshield and these slopes are really cool, the giant ones. But yeah, a couple windows. Not not too much interesting in this one, honestly. It's just basic bricks. So yeah, let's get building. Okay, this is the end of bag two. And as you can see, the whole front engine is done. And it's actually cool they do here. The battery box right here, there's a button in there for the battery box. And they put this section on a ratcheting piece. So then as you press it, 
it comes back up and it's clicky noise. But I think the coolest part of this is that since you need to replace batteries and this like is built in there, right? That, like there's no way that could come out. There actually is. This entire middle section right here slides up and then you can easily access the bottom for replacing batteries. I mean, batteries suck, but if they're making it easy to do, that's kind of nice. The nasty nose, I mean like, I don't like it. There's two spare pieces in this bag. There's like no spare pieces in this at all. <laughs> Probably because mostly big pieces. But yeah, on to bag four. Mm. This one's got quite a few pieces in it. And it's got a couple minifigures. I don't think the last one had any minifigures at all. So you can see wheels here and they're actually to a wheelchair. And the cool part about this train is that the doors open wide enough to like fit a wheelchair in them. Like they have double doors, so it looks kind of nice. Lego trains usually don't even have doors, so it's nice to see doors on the sides. Like as you can see, big doors right there. Uh, but yeah, this is what the wheelchair piece looks like. I'm missing the front part, but as you can see, I don't know why there's lime green wheels. It's kind of a little weird. I feel like they should be black, but yeah, a little accessories and things. But yeah, let's build. Okay, I finished bag five. An interesting thing about this one is that the like train wheels aren't in this bag, they're in the next bag, but they just got like separated, which is interesting. And then on top right here, there's this little stub, which is actually for the wheelchair dude, so he can fit in there and boom. So like he can make his way through those bigger doors and then there's a spot for him. Then there's seating over here, a little place to hold something. I don't know what it's supposed to hold. Guess I might figure out later. Wait, maybe it's supposed to hold luggage, is it? I don't know. And there's a little kitchen over here. So yeah, let's move on to bag five. Okay, for some reason, bag five is a lot more air in it. Than the other ones, like it's really poofy. <laughs> but this one's got a lot of windows and doors and stuff in it. It's a lot of transparent pieces. There we go. Mostly black in this one. Let's get back to building. All right, there's bag five finished. So this it's this entire car. It's the wheelchair and cafe car. And these cars actually do look really nice. The one thing I don't like about it is how many studs are on top. Like I feel like there should be some other design on top than just straight flat studs because it looks a little boring. <laughs> but besides that, it looks really good. And the stripe down here does have a little gap in it because that's just what Lego pieces do. There is ways to get rid of that, but it's like probably too complicated for Lego to even try and set. But yeah, it looks pretty good. So let's move on to bag six. Only two bags left okay so it looks like just like the same train type of pieces in this one now we got like the train wheel things and then i think there's just one minifigure in this one there's just a girl with pink hair uh but yeah let's get building Okay, the end of bag six is of course just the bottom of this car. And as you can see, there's these little knobs for bikes in this one, so it's a little different. But yeah, besides that, it's basically identical to the other one. But yeah, let's open bag seven. Yeah, bag seven. Okay, here we go, bag seven. This one's just like the roof, so it's just black pieces mostly, just like the other one. All these pieces are probably identical to the last bag, now that I think about it. I don't know if there's anything different. There might be a couple things different. Oh yeah, uh, let's finish up this choo-choo train. Bro, I'm so weird. Okay, there's the final bag finished. And what I actually realized is that bag six and seven didn't have any spare pieces, which I think is kind of funny, but I think since the cars are like almost identical with their smaller pieces, they just give you like one extra door handle for the eight door handles instead of just giving you some in the other bag too. I don't know, seems kind of interesting. But yeah, that's all three cars done. And now we gotta run it, but to run the train, gotta put batteries in it. Oh crap, you can actually see one. Crap, spoilers. So the set doesn't use one battery. It doesn't use two batteries. It uses 10 batteries. Oh man, that is, that, that's a little too many. <laughs> This is like one pack of AAA batteries for this entire set. It's a little too much. I think they should uh, make them rechargeable. <laughs> but let's install these. So there's a little screw on the back of the remote. Crap, I'm gonna strip that screw. I got too small of a bit there. I don't even know what to call the bit, but sure. 
we'll call it a bit. I'll just come out like that. Yeah, the remote itself uses four. Like, uh, that seems excessive. Maybe Bluetooth uses more power or something. Okay, four batteries. Okay, one, two, three, and four. So easy enough. Let me put that in there. And then oh, it doesn't stay in without a screw, which I think is kind of annoying. Get to unscrew it every single time. There we go, remote. I'm not gonna power it on yet. And then the train, they made it easy, like I showed you earlier. Just literally just pull that out. And then screws right there. For some reason, this screw is painted black and these ones are just silver. I prefer the silver, because then if I strip them, you don't see it. You know what I mean? Or if I scratch them, it's bound to happen. Do I get these off? I feel like I, oh, yep. What the? Okay, this one's interesting. There's a whole like intersection, I think, that comes out, yeah. And then I put the batteries on either side of that. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This thing that comes out reminds me of those flashlights that have it inside. Like, it feels like that too, it's funny. Push it in there and screw it back together. I just thought of another thing. If one of these batteries doesn't work, then I have to like unscrew all of this and figure out what battery it is because there's so many batteries. They just make it rechargeable, but they don't. Like this is like horrible for the environment. Like rechargeable batteries are better for the environment than having all these batteries get thrown away. And Lego's all about helping the environment. <laughs> okay, I have no idea how to pair these. I'm guessing I just click the green button. Remote first, I think that's how RC works is you do the remote first, but this is Bluetooth, not the same thing, but you know. Okay, and then I, sure. I don't even, I have no idea how to do this. There's probably instructions for it, but. Oh, the green, moment of truth. Hey, let's go. Something's moving and then this should turn on the lights. And it does, crazy. A really good part about using Powered Up is that they have the option so that the lights can turn on without the motor turning on and their adjustment doesn't depend on how fast the motor is going. Power functions did have a way to do that, but not this simple. And Lego 9 Volt has no way of doing that. However fast the train is going is how bright these lights are. So it's nice to have that. But yeah, let's uh, attach these. Boom, and boom. This is actually super long. It doesn't even fit in frame, but yeah. Let's go put this on the track and run it. So I'm installing the Lego Powered Up app right now. Like I can control it from my phone, which is cool, but it's like a huge app. As you can see, hopefully it's focusing. I don't know, but it's 235 megabytes, which is pretty big for an app. So uh, that's kind of annoying. It's taking forever to download, but we'll just do it the old fashioned way with the controller. Gotta put it on the track. Another bad thing about this, so since it's using Bluetooth, Bluetooth range isn't like too far of distances. So if this loses connection with the train, I'm not sure if the train keeps going or if it stops. And with Lego power functions and keep going with Lego 9 volt, it doesn't really matter as long as the electrical current can get through the track. So that is technically a negative of this one is the Bluetooth range on it. So let's turn the lights on. They look way brighter on camera, by the way. They do not look that bright in real life. Another thing too is that this train station is like super far back from the track, which makes it really funny with how far away the train cars are from it, but it's so the big chonky nose of it can fit if there's a turn right before this and the nose doesn't hit anything, but it's just like makes it look ridiculous. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, is this full speed? Okay, I mean, I don't know. This seems like average. I think it's about the same speed as Lego 9 volt from what I can tell. So I mean, not anything too crazy. Yeah, I want us to check the speed to see if it increases, how much it increases with just the one car. Oh my. Oh yeah, it's something different. When it flew off, the motor was still going because with Lego 9 volt, it gets power through the track. So I'm used to it turning off when it exits the track. Yeah, so I think uh, by itself, it's a little too fast. Another thing that I found with these that makes it really nice is how much weight the batteries add to the train so that this can get a super good grip on the track. Because with Lego 9 volt, sometimes it won't get a good enough grip on the track, which causes issues and it won't be able to pull. But this one, since it has all that, it's really nice. But then the battery part sucks. So, you know, actually, you know what would be a win-win? If they put rechargeable batteries, it'd add weight and it would recharge, problem solved. <laughs> I was gonna check out the app, but it's only 50% done. Like, uh, this is taking forever. <laughs> I don't like these this button system very much. I like having on Lego 9 Volt that one. The thing that you twist, I like that a lot better. Lego Power Functions did that too. And this, you just click a button, which I don't think is as satisfying. But you can twist these sideways, which is cool. 
I guess. All the cars make like a gust of wind when it goes by, it's funny. Another thing that is really nice about these is that just like with Lego power functions, as you're going, you can immediately stop the train with one button, which I think is a safety thing. Well, kind of a safety thing and Oh, that's why it's taking forever to download. But it's a safety thing and it's kind of just nice to stop it because Lego 9 Volt does not have that. <laughs> And another huge plus of having this smart stuff is that you can connect it to any device and have third-party software and automatically code these to stop at stations or basically whatever you want, which is kind of cool. You can get something similar to that with Lego 9 Volt with the really old Lego Mindstorms, but it's definitely not as simple as you could get it with this, which is really nice. 94%, hey, it's almost done. The reason it's taking forever is because my brother's updating Fortnite over there. That's why it's taking forever. You can have negative lights on the train. Like what? but negative lights just do the same thing as positive lights. <gasps> it's installed. Here we go. Open. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Oh, it's sideways. Okay, Lego powered up. Turn my sound up. Okay, I would choose the thing. These are like all really old sets, isn't it? That Star Wars one's from like years ago. Who motorizes that? This cargo train set came out at the same time as this set. And this one's right here. Let's go. Looks like Lego, that's for sure. So I don't know if I'm connected to the hub or what. Oh, I was like, what is that noise? It makes noises on here. It says to connect and click the green button on the hub. Do I hold it down or just do I need to turn off the controller? I turn like to a yellow light. Off. How do I turn this off? Off you go. Do I hold it down until it turns off? Oh, there we go. Oh, it's doing something. Is it updating it? I guess this is an issue with modern technologies. You have to update it. And it's like flashing RGB lights down here. It's like a party in the train. And this might take a minute too because of the Fortnite download. <laughs> Ninety nine percent, a hundred. Let's go. Okay, it updated. So now, okay, so moving up. I'm put, that is so loud. That is annoying. Well, did it like slowly break over here though? Cause that's kind of cool if it did. I'm putting this against the mic so you can really hear the app. But, like when this thing's going so far, you can barely hear the app. <laughs> so if I stop it. I think it tries to make it like a train. It will slowly slow down, which is kind of cool. Okay, there's these buttons over here. What do they do? Okay, that's a wheelchair person getting on apparently. Bike bell. That was loud. Oh, that's my favorite one. Okay. What did I just do? Okay, I do like that animation of like it slowly stopping with the noise. It's kind of nice. I just wish that thing had the speaker in it instead of my phone because it's kind of dumb with that. Um, it says it's going 300 kilometers an hour. So I don't know how many miles per hour that is. Google, how many miles per hour is 300 kilometers per hour? 300 kilometers per hour is equal to 186.411 miles per hour. 186.411. Uh, that's pretty fast. I don't know if that's like actually to scale with the train, but you know, it's cool. So the lights I can turn on over here. Yep. And then, oh crap, wrong thing, wrong thing. How do I turn up the light? Oh, they only give me a couple settings on here. This is the coding and I just want to whip together something real quick. I want to see if it's like actually easy to do. Cause if it's easy to do, then I'll be able to do it. Well, I don't know what to do. I don't know if there's a tutorial. I don't see one. What? This is way too confusing. Math? I don't want to do math when I'm doing Legos. I do enough of that. It's cool. Oh, <gasps> I did something. I did something. I coded. Is this power? So let me turn that up to, oh, okay. I should be able to run it. And then after a second of the train running, it will turn on the headlights. So hopefully I coded this right. Oh, <gasps> it worked. I'm oh, insane. Okay, I mean like it's fairly easy once you get the hang of it. I still don't know how to delete a block that I don't need, but I guess it started working. I'm just wondering if there's like a way to control it with a Bluetooth controller to your phone, cause that'd be cool. Okay, so apparently Lego doesn't support third-party controllers straight through the app, so you can get a different app called Brick Connect. Okay, so I got this app figured out. So I made a creation is what they call it. And I have this profile, which maps buttons from my controller to the train. So if I play this profile, trying to connect to the hub, there we go. And now if I click forward on my controller, the train goes forward. And then if I click B, the train will stop. That noise is so annoying. If the motor is moving at all, it makes that annoying noise. 
so annoying. But then I can just press B to stop the motor. Uh, but then I set A so it toggles the lights to full. So as you can see, if I click it once, then it'll be full. And then I click it again, it's off. And then I set X to slowly do all 10 light settings. So, you know, if I want any lower settings, I can do that. So I can control it from this way more comfortable controller than this thing, which is like a... <laughs> a lot smaller and uh, a lot thinner and a lot less comfortable. But yeah, this is through a third party app, so not through Lego at all. My phone has to be on for it to work too. Besides that, it works, you know? So cool part about this train, these corners are all indented, which makes it so on the turns, they don't collide. And on straight parts, they can be really close together. As you can see, there's only one brick thick in there, which is super nice because other Lego trains have a huge gap right here. And it just makes it look a lot cleaner from above, as you can see. And then, turns will still work because of those indented corners. So the train honestly doesn't look too bad if you leave out that, except for batteries. Ew. <laughs> this one right here, I didn't show you how the bikes go in. I don't know, hopefully you can see that, but yeah, those, that feet part of it just sits in there and then the bikes can hold up in there. Pretty cool. Okay, so after building this, do I prefer this or Lego 9 Volt? Well, if I'm being honest, I still prefer Lego 9 Volt just because I don't have to run it off batteries. It's really annoying having these batteries because just from me running it right there, the battery's already at 90%, which means they lost a tenth of their battery just from that, which is probably like maybe 30 minutes of running it. So it's, uh, it kind of sucks in that aspect. I do like the look of this train though. And if I wanted to, I could put the nine volt motor from that train just on this one, they're compatible. But the good part about this is that it can run on Lego nine volt track and still work. Well, nine volt trains cannot run on Lego RC track that is just plastic. It needs the metal rails for nine volt to work, but this can run on either track. The only plus I can see with this over Lego nine volt is the coding and how easy it is or somewhat easy. The reason I like the nine volt so much is like in a Lego city, if you just want to have trains running like constantly, then you can just have it plugged into a wall and never have to worry about it. While these you'll have to worry about probably every like couple of hours because they'll run out of batteries so quick. But speaking of Lego city, there might be something coming. But yeah, that's what I think of this train. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. Do you prefer Lego 9 volt, Lego power functions even, or do you prefer the newest Lego powered up? But yeah, if you wanna check out the video I made on Lego 9 volt trains and why I love those so much, you can check out the video up here and down in the description. But as always, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell. Oh, biology, what have you done to me? Why am I singing this song? Um... Wait, was it up here? Yeah. Wait, no? Yeah, I think it's up there. Uh... Okay, don't buy Ed Sheeran. Here it is on YouTube Music. Wait, how is this shut? Do I rip it open? Where's my knife? Why did I put my knife? Do I really just... Why did I put it? Oh, I found it.